So let's come back to the problem of computing VRA. This was the number of different values or distinct values of an attribute A in a relation R. If you want to get the distinct number of values, it means we have to remove duplicates. What duplicate should not count into our counting? This can be done by sorting or hashing. Both, unfortunately, are quite expensive. The other alternative to do this is using probabilistic estimators. That means we will have a mechanism where we go over the table once, and instead of sorting and hashing, we would record the different occurrences, and in the end, magically, the estimator will tell us what is the estimated value of the number of distinct values of an attribute A. So instead of walking through the slides, I would like to introduce the first estimator, the so-called flageolet martin sketch, by um, illustrating it on an empty slide. So what we have is a multiset, which corresponds to the values of our attribute that we want to estimate. We want to estimate the number of distinct values this attribute takes on. Let's say we have values A, B, A, C, A, B, D, and so on. And what is the estimator doing? It is taking a hash function, h, and is applying h on these values. Hash of a, hash of b, hash of a again, hash of c, and so on. And is doing it for all of these values in this multiset. We will see in a minute why it doesn't matter if a happens multiple times. And, and hence the estimator will count distinct values and not the total number of occurrences. It is important that the hash function is creating hash values which are uniformly distributed. So if we have hash of a, we could for instance look like this, 1, 0, 1, 1, and here we have 0, 1, 1, 1, and here we have again, because it's a, 0, uh, 1, 0, 1, 1. Here we might have 1, 1, 1, 0, and then also we have d, and this might have, um, yeah, I don't know, 0, 0, 1, 1, something like this. So these are uh, uniformly distributed, these values. So what do we do with these values? We create a vector, a bit vector, b, and initially all of these bits here are set to 0. And now when we do the hashing here, or while we're doing the hashing, we look at these hash values, for instance here, 1, 0, 1, 1, and we look at the position of the least significant bit which is set to 1. The least significant bit, so here it starts with least and the most significant bit, so the least significant bit here in our writing is on the right hand side, and here this one is the position of the least significant one bit. So this is the first bit at position 0, which is set to 1. Right? Then we go to our bit vector, and we will set here the position 0 accordingly to 1. Then we proceed, looking at the second hash here. This is for b, and we again see by coincidence, that also here, the bit at position 0 is set to 1, and then we go to our b vector here, but we see already it's already 1, so nothing changes, it's, it remains 1. So we, get, we then go to our next hash, this is again the hash of a, and as you can see, we have again obviously the same position as, as the least significant 1 bit, and again nothing will happen because, um, yeah, well, the entry is already set to 1, and b is a bit vector. So we continue, and now it's getting a bit more interesting. Here for the hash of c, we have the second bit set to 1, and the first bit here is 0, so we go one further in the search for the least significant 1 bit, and this is the position um, 1, so we go here and we set the 0 bit to 1. So, and now we have here hash of d, Again here, this is like the the um, leftmost one bit is the bit at position zero, and this is already set to one, nothing happens, right? 
So you see why this is why this is ignoring duplicate occurrences here for the case of A, as illustrated. And of course, same for B and so on would also happen if B now we would um, hash again and we get the same bit vector and the same least significant bit. So, so okay, we understand why these um, duplicates are not counted. But why is this B vector now giving us a hint about the a number of distinct values in our multiset. For this, I would like to ask the important question, how many times, assuming that we know that we have n distinct values in our set, how many times do you think this bit is set to 1? For how many of the distinct values in our multiset is this bit set to 1? Assuming that we know we have n distinct values. And we have to recall again that these hash functions are uniformly distributed. So for how many of these values is this um, bit set to 1? Well, for all, where the first bit here is a 1. It can either be a 1 or can be a 0, right? But for the case where it's 1, this bit is set to 1. For how many of these cases of n happen? does it happen? Well, n divided by 2. For half of all numbers, or all values, they will set the first bit here for the b vector to 1. OK, this should make sense, right? Let's have a look at this bit here, the bit at position 2, or at position 1, sorry, the second bit, by counting from 0, right? So how many times is this set to 1? Well, for the ones that already set this bit to 1, they won't set this bit to 1 because they have already set this bit to 1. We're looking for the least significant bit. So this means that for the ones, for the numbers, for the a, b, c, d, that did not, they did not set the first bit here to 1, which are n divided by 2, half of them will have the least significant bit like this one here. So we have this here set to 1 by n divided by 4. Right? Again, assuming that the hashing is done uniformly. And we did not have the case in the data, but there could be also a 1 here or a 1 here and a 1 here, and each of these ones have a certain expectation that this um, 1 exists or is set to a certain uh, by so and so many of the elements. And this rule here that we see, n divided by 2, n divided by 4, n divided by 8, and so on, continues up to a certain position where it's very unlikely that this bit will be set to 1, because n divided by a certain value, n divided by 2 to the, let's say, power of t is 0 or 1. So it's very unlikely, or smaller, so it's very unlikely that this bit is set to 1. So let's say we know the position of this bit, which is set to 1, and then only zeros continue. If we have this, then we can somehow estimate the number of distinct values n. So we're searching for n. So what the algorithm is proposing then is to find this position where it's unlikely that the bit is set to 1 by looking for the leftmost 0 bit. In this case it would be here. This is our leftmost 0 bit. The algorithm takes this position as the indication that n divided by 2 to the bit position is unlikely to be set by any any of these a, b, c, d values. So this position we call t. In this case, t is 2. And then our estimator will be 2 to the 2 is 4. This is the expected number of distinct values in our multiset. And by, by luck, or because I made up the example, this also turns out to be the exact value. So again, 
we take a hash function, we apply the hash function on each of these values, a, b, c, d. The hash function is uniformly distributed, that means that half of these hash values will fall on the first position of the b vector, where the least significant bit is here at position 0, right? And here, and here, and here n divided by 4 will be then will be having the next significant bit, n divided by 8 and so on. And at some point it will get more and more unlikely that this bit is set to 1, and the estimator takes the, the leftmost 0 as the indicator of the um, logarithm to base of 2 of the number of distinct elements. So in the end, in our example, this t is 2, so we have 2 to the 2 is 4 is our estimation. If you're looking at the paper and the forthcoming slides, you see that we don't take 2 to the 2 directly, but there is also some little approximation factor coming from the theory, but this is the intuition why the estimator works, the flagellet martin estimator. So let's go back to the slides. You see here the citation of this very important work by flagellet and Martin, and a bit more details. So the bit vector we are reserving to keep these least significant one bits, the vector we call b, has a size of m, which is um, logarithm of n. Of course, we don't know n, so we have to reserve, of course, large enough in order to keep really the, um, the or have the possibility to keep all of the information. So we scan over the input data as illustrated, and we are recording for every of these hash values the least significant one. And then we set the position that we found to 1 in our b vector. Another example, we have input 17, 5, 19, and so on. So if you assume that the hash function is um, of 17, will give us this, and for 5 it's this, right? This is the hash function if it applies here that it's the same as the value, it doesn't really matter. Assume it's just some um, uniform distributed hash value. Then here for this first case, the least significant one bit is 2, or the position, because we're start starting from 0, this is 0, 1, 2. Yeah, so we have 2, and we're rec recording the one bit at b of 2. And for this case here, we have the least significant one bit is at position 0, right? It's just like the leftmost bit. In the end, let's say we do this for more values, we have a b vector that looks like this. Yeah. And now we take the position of the leftmost 0 bit, which is here. In this case, it's position 0, 1, 2, 3. And then we would take 2 to the power of 3 as the estimate. But if you're looking up the paper or the slide here, we see there's a little correction factor. We take 2 to the position t, also 2 to the 3, divided by this correction factor phi. And in this example, we will get as an estimate 10.35. Yeah. So, how good does this work? Well, it doesn't work very, very good because of the um, noise of having, let's say, not so many hash values. And then um, just by having, by chance, one more one bit here and a zero bit will follow, will make a factor of two larger estimate, right? So the, and if you're implementing this, you will see that these estimates are jumping around largely and the estimate are quite often very far off. But what you're doing, what the authors proposed, to, uh, why you, how you can solve this, you're taking multiple hash functions, h, so you have multiple bit vectors, b, and then you're taking from each of these vectors, b, you're getting one t value, like here, and you're taking the average t value, and then you're doing the estimation based on the average t value created from multiple of these vectors, b. This is called stochastic averaging. And then the estimator is really useful in practice because the estimates are quite good. But for one estimator only, then um, the error can be really big. 
this is important to note. And again, what I have already illustrated, the intuition that the first entry of B will be set by half of the hash values and so on. And there's a region where ones and zeros are mixed and this position of that we assume where this happens is an approximation of the logarithm of n to the base of two. Hence, we can take this t, the, the leftmost zero bit in the b vector as the estimate. The estimate, of course, for this vector, for this value i, and um, then we have two to the t divided by the correction factor as our estimate of the number of distinct elements in our multiset. 